This is a 35 and a half pound block of solid black 20% glass fiber reinforced polycarbonate that I'm gonna make swords and axes out of. It's 37 by six by three and a quarter inches. And you can make functional stuff from this unlike obsidian. Gendry ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> The huge piece of black polycarbonate that I got was pretty expensive, but it's big enough that I can make multiple things. I'm definitely doing at least a sword. I could also do daggers, a spearhead, an axe. But I also got this huge sheet of Lexan, which is the brand name for polycarbonate. This is the clear kind. It still has the protective film on it, but I can make White Walker ice swords out of this stuff. Now to offset the cost of this plastic, after I make these things for this project and see how they work, I'm gonna put them up on eBay. So if you have a burning desire to buy one of my projects, you can help me decide which ones I'm going to make because you'll have an opportunity to buy them. So go down to the comments right now and let me know which one you wanna see made so that you get a chance to buy it on eBay after the project is done. Now, why am I making these things out of plastic? You know nothing, Jon Snow. You can't really make a very functional sword out of ice because it's magic. So polycarbonate's a good option, and the same thing goes for obsidian. You can make obsidian swords if you just mount the chips on the blade, but it's hard to make the whole thing out of it. Plus, a chunk of obsidian big enough to make an entire sword from would cost a fortune. Plus, it'll be cool to use plastic, and I think this stuff is actually gonna work, because polycarbonate is amazing. Let me show you just how crazy tough this stuff is. This is a little chunk of that black polycarbonate that's 20% glass fiber reinforced. I'm gonna hit it with a hammer, really hard. There's a little mush. You can see it deformed slightly, but that is pretty incredible for plastic to take that kind of hit. If you think that only lasted because it was a big chunk, here's a tiny sliver. Not too bad for a little piece of plastic. You can see the little cracks, but I have a feeling that the majority of this cracked because this has glass fiber reinforcement, which makes it incredibly rigid instead of being flexible enough to handle impacts like that. But I still have a lot of faith that this stuff's gonna work. And I cut the blanks for the swords already, but you can see that it warped. See how bad that warped? Basically, that huge chunk of polycarbonate had internal stresses, so when I cut it into the blanks to make the swords, Five pieces. That tension allowed the pieces to bend. So to fix it, it's a thermoplastic, and I spent a bunch of time trying to heat these up and get them to go back straight. And this one I worked on a lot, and it's better than it was, but it's still not straight. And then I decided I would just make the swords and worry about it afterwards, because if it's a lot less material, it's gonna be a lot easier to heat up because this stuff is a pretty good thermal insulator, so it's hard to get the heat deep enough into it that I can actually form the whole piece of plastic. Polycarbonate is difficult to cut and shape because it is such a resilient plastic and I knew that the best tool that I could get to be able to cut it into shape from the blanks that I've got is a bandsaw. So I threw out some internet feelers and an old friend of mine said that he had an old bandsaw that he would trade me for a case of beer. He warned me that it was worn out and that it wasn't that great, but you can't beat the price. This is a Shopcraft 10-inch bandsaw, model T6760-20P. And it still works, but there's some problems. The blade that he had on it was dull. Not too dull to cut wood, it cuts wood fine, but too dull to cut polycarbonate. You definitely can't do this with a new bandsaw blade. So this takes a 57-inch blade, and that is not a common size. I couldn't find one of those anywhere, but I did find a 56 and 7 8 inch blade, which is close, but it wasn't the right kind of blade for me to be able to cut this plastic effectively. So I went and picked up a variety pack of blades that were too big because I watched a This Old Tony video where he TIG welded bandsaw blades back together. I don't have a TIG welder, but my friend does. It was crazy hard and it took me a really long time because in This Old Tony's video, the blades were 25 thousandths thick and mine was 10 thousandths thick. So his were literally two and a half times the thickness of mine. So needless to say, it took a really long time, a lot of practice, but I eventually got them welded together and I put them on and they still weren't working right. They were cutting, but I'll show you what the cuts looked like. These are a bunch of pieces that I cut off while I was adjusting it, trying to get it to make a good cut. And I didn't know what caused this ripple effect, but with the new blades, it was a lot better than the old ones. These ripples are huge and they would have taken absolutely forever to clean up. <laughs> 
searched the internet and tried to find why a bandsaw would do wavy cuts and all I kept getting information on was wandering and drifting which this was doing also. You can't beat the price. There's lots of videos out there on how to set the guides for these things but it's pretty simple. You put the blade on, you get it riding in the right place with the adjuster knob, then you adjust the guide carriage so that the little alignment blocks aren't touching the teeth but they're guiding most of the blade on the sides and then you set that thrust bearing on the back and you want everything to be very close to the blade but not touching it. So I did that and I still couldn't fix it so then I ended up pulling the little brass guides out and they were pretty chewed up so I filed them down, put everything back in, I very meticulously adjusted everything to be sure that all of it was super straight. I got everything set and the wanderer was gone, the drift, it cuts dead straight now which is awesome but it's still cutting ripples. But I kept searching for wavy cut and I talked to another friend of mine about it and he looked up ripple. I don't know why I didn't think to look up ripple, but I didn't and he did. And he told me that that is most likely based on the feed rate. So I thought it was cutting really slow in the first place, but I went ahead and cut even slower. And my cuts went from looking like this to like this. You can't beat the price. I didn't think it was going to be feed rate and I knew it wasn't the material that was causing this because I tried cutting wood and it cut the same ripples on wood that it did in the plastic. So it had nothing to do with the material. I guess I just drastically underestimated how fast a bandsaw cuts because that little cut right there took a really long time. This is a perfect example of starting a project thinking it's going to be relatively easy and then it turns into many projects and it ends up being a far harder than you thought it was going to be in the first place. So if you're out there trying to do stuff, make sure you don't give up. You just got to keep trying. Take each little problem and step as it comes. Make sure you let me know in the comments which things from Game of Thrones you want me to make so that you have the chance to buy them on eBay after I'm done. And I wanted to mention real quick, since this is an odd video, a friend of mine's dad runs a channel called CNC4XR7. He makes his own CNC machines. It's pretty awesome. He has really great videos if you're trying to do that kind of stuff. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out if you're into CNC machine stuff. It's way over my head, but it is cool. Anyway, now that I've got the tools, next video is going to be me actually making this stuff and putting it together. I just felt like it wouldn't be fair if I didn't show you all the problems that I went through to get to the point where I could actually start working on it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.